All right, Lepore, we got to talk about Johnny Gaudreau. Yes, we do. This was a wild situation. It's a fucking movie, man. They should write a script. I'm stunned. I'm sure most of you listening are stunned. Lepore, I think, is probably stunned. So the Calgary Flames reportedly offered Johnny Gaudreau an eight-year contract for $10.5 million. Crazy. It could have been more. It could have been less. But I think it's pretty safe to say that they offered him north of $10 million. Okay. And this guy decides to leave the Calgary Flames, a team that had a great season last year under Daryl Sutter. Johnny Gaudreau had the best season of his career, 115 points, playing on a line with Matthew Kachuk and Elias Lindholm, arguably, arguably the best line in the NHL last year. Mm -hmm. He leaves all of that. He spent his entire career there. The fans loved him there. And he takes his talents not to his hometown in New Jersey, not to the New York Islanders who were also rumored to be, you know, one of the heavy hitters to sign Johnny Gaudreau, not to the Philadelphia Flyers. He goes to the Columbus Blue Jackets. So random. The Columbus Blue Jackets, seven years, 9.75 million AAV. It, it just completely stunned the hockey world. I can't believe it, Lepore. And <laughs> listening to his press conference, he, he said some things that pissed off a lot of Flames fans. The one quote I will mention, he said, it was best for us not to go back to Calgary. Dun, dun, and, dun. and he also mentioned that he was looking at Columbus for a while as if this team was on his radar for, I don't know, was it a year, two years, three years? Nice. Mentioned that every time that he played in Columbus, he loved it there. Okay. So, Lepore, man. What the hell just happened? Was there not? Did the deal not? Was it New Jersey? The deal came out where they offered him and it was more as well. Or again, rumors. Yeah, I believe New Jersey offered him like a massive deal. is kind of like the, the, Flames the Flames deal, like over 10 million. I think this is one of those stories where we're going to dissect it. We're going to put our hands up in the air and not understand it. At the end of the day, there's a reason why he chose Columbus. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe he's got... I don't know, some family there or friends there, or he's married, right? With a kid. Like that was a story. So maybe like, I don't know if he has a kid, but he's definitely married. Oh, okay. So like some connection to his wife, who knows? And all these guys are different. Some of them care about money. Some of them don't as much. Some of them care about what city they're playing in. Some of them don't. Some care about being on a competitive team. A lot of them don't. I hate to tell like hockey fans out there everywhere. A lot of these guys don't give a shit if their team's competitive or not. So I'm sure he had his reasons. As for the Flames, like, I assumed he was gone. All year, I assumed he was gone. Like, I remember when we did the show uh, last year when Sutter had just come on. Remember Sutter was trashing him in press conferences? Like, pe people, have, people have short memories, man. And that's all it takes for him to turn his back and say, fuck you. And, like, at the end of the day, like, these players don't owe anything to these teams because they're part of a union and they can walk. So it sucks for Flames fans. I mean, the guy's a great player and all the stories are coming out today, how it tarnishes his legacy on how, because of how he left and this and that, but they knew he was gone. It sucks. But at the end of the day, what difference does it make who he goes to? Maybe you could say it's more insulting because he chose a team that doesn't really appear to be very competitive. But I would say too, like again, other factors why he went there. Who knows? Like he signed a seven-year deal. Maybe Columbus is a contender in three or four years. Like, we don't know. And maybe the Flames suck in three or four years. Like, we don't know, right? So, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, that's kind of like the headline of the Johnny Goudreau story. I don't know. Because not a lot of it makes sense on the surface. But I'm sure if we got Goudreau in a room, whether he went off about some connection to the state of Ohio or how he was unhappy in Calgary or whatever ticked him off, and guys, let's face it again, stuff people don't want to hear, but on the guns for punishment podcast, we don't tell you what you want to hear. We tell you the truth. A lot of these guys don't want to play in Canada, let alone Alberta. And like, like I'm a Northern BC boy. So like, like I can acknowledge this and talk openly about it. He's an American kid, Calgary. He's not going to stay in Calgary guys. It, it's just, it's just the reality of it. Now, people can point to cities like, so for example, like I've I had this conversation the other day, actually, and getting a little off topic. As far as Vancouver goes, I'm surprised Vancouver is not more of like a free agency hub, like beautiful city. They say, what is a ski in the morning, swim in the afternoon, 
Well, obviously real estate is really expensive. So that's a con, but I've always kind of thought that, you know, Vancouver should do better than they should. But as far as like the Calgary's, the Edmonton's, the Winnipeg's, it's hard, man. You have to get guys who either their mindset is, like I said before, guys have different mindsets. Their mindset is I want to win. And I really want to play here. You get that Canadian boy who really wants to play for a Canadian team. You have to get those reasons. But there's going to be a lot of players who don't have those reasons stuck in their brain. And Goudreau was one of them. And like, like I said, a lot of people anticipated him leaving. So am I shocked? Not at all. Am I shocked at the Columbus Blue Jackets? Yes. I, I really thought he was going to the Flyers. That, that's the, I just pictured him in the orange. I'm like, he's going to go to Philadelphia. And the whole thing, try and turn that around. But he's confused as I am, Bruno. <laughs> crotch discomfort hurting your game? Fear no more. The kings of crotch comfort, Manscaped, have spent two years designing the most comfortable boxer briefs out there. Sleek, soft, comfortable, and flexible. The brand new Boxers 2.0 from Manscaped. Take your balls to the royal ball throne. The global leaders in below the waist grooming have the lawnmower 4.0 for the trimming, so you can wear the Boxers 2.0 for the chilling. They even trademarked the jewel pouch, so you know it's serious. I think it's time you invest in your family jewels. So let your bulge breathe and get 20% off and free shipping using the promo code GFP20 at manscaped.com. Lapore, these boxers are unbelievable, man. They are amazing, Anthony Bruno. I always say in life, there are certain things you don't mess around with. There are certain things you have to commit to. Go all the way. So when you're choosing your underwear, why wear like some shitty cotton pair or a pair that's going to ride up? Commit to Manscaped underwear because it's A plus all the way. Super comfortable, super durable, very light. You won't regret it. Man, these boxers honestly are the best boxes I've ever worn. Shockingly good. Yeah. They are so damn comfortable. Good. It's it's actually unbelievable. So you got yeah. the boxers, you got the lawnmower 4.0. Don't forget about this bad boy. So many great products from Manscaped. Come on, guys. If you have not already purchased some of these Manscaped products, I don't know what you're doing because they will yeah. take your game to the next level. So get once again, you can get 20% off and free shipping using the promo code GFP20 at manscaped.com. That is 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using the promo code GFP20. Yeah, it's just a rough situation for the Calgary Flames. And listen, people could be saying the same thing about Austin Matthews, American. He doesn't want to play in Canada. He wants to go back to the States. I mean, you know, people... We, we've joked around about it on this podcast, you know, having conversations about Matthews leaving the Leafs and McDavid leaving Edmonton to come home to Toronto. It was a situation where Johnny Gaudreau clearly wanted to play somewhere on the East Coast in, in the States. He says closer to his family, but when you look at the distance between Columbus, Ohio, and Yeah, it's Jersey, not the East Coast. That's the whole story. It's like an eight and a half hour drive. Awesome. But obviously, it's a lot closer than... Than Calgary is to New Jersey, and, and when Calgary's... you're and when you're flying in a private jet, it's even closer. Exactly. So when you look at it from that perspective, okay, you're on the East Coast, you're closer to your family. The big, just oh my God, what the hell is? Why did he pick the Columbus Blue Jackets when he could have picked any of these other teams that were in the mix? Because Columbus mm. last year finished 21st in the NHL. They don't appear to be anywhere close to, I don't want to say competing for a playoff spot because they're, they're going to be one of those like borderline teams that could potentially fight for a wild card spot, especially now that they picked up Johnny hockey, but yeah. this team isn't winning a championship anytime soon. They're not going to be very competitive anytime soon. He could have gotten more money in other places. He must've just really liked Yarmo Kekalainen, what that organization was selling him. Like yeah, who knows? There's Liney. other things right behind the scenes, maybe from like, you know, a personal standpoint with his family, there was something very intriguing about Columbus. Like, I don't know. And, and maybe this will come out eventually, but clearly he could have got more money in pretty much any other place he would have picked. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. You know, it's funny. I just caught myself how, not that I'm defending what Goudreau did, but I'm kind of justifying it. If Austin Matthews left him free agency and signed with the fucking Columbus Blue Jackets, oh my God, I'd be having a fucking meltdown. Yeah, we'd, we'd both be having a meltdown. Oh, so it's funny how when it affects you, like flame slams, I'm not blaming you for being upset. I'm just saying from the outside, I can see it. But if it was me, my team, my player, oh yeah, we, we'd be th throwing uh, firebombs at Austin Matthews' house in Arizona.
It's just brutal. And I don't know how Calgary recovers from this now, because listen, I, I still think they're going to be competitive because Daryl Sutter teams, they always find a way to like, even if they don't have star players, I feel like that team is just going to muck it up. They're going to play the same sort of style where they're winning like these low scoring games, but that's a big hit to their offense, man. That is yeah. such a big hit. Like, and now, you know, they still have the Matthew Kachuk situation where they have to re-sign him as an RFA. And now Flames fans are really nervous about that. Like, this is this is not a great situation. Like, we could be looking at a Flames team that's just completely blowing it up over the next maybe, couple of years. Maybe that was part of it. Like, maybe he knows something we don't like. And I'm not, I don't have insider information, haha, or like some sort of take. But like, maybe Kachuk's leaving. And Possibly. he knows. And he knows. And he's like, well, that's my star. That's like a star line made in mind if he's leaving. I mean, yeah, because I, those guys definitely talk. Let's say he thinks, all right, Matt, I've talked to Matthew Kachuk. This guy is not really keen on staying here when he yeah. becomes a UFA. So am I really going to lock in here for eight years? Yeah, I don't really Matthew like Kachuk the coach. is going to be out the door potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's another something American will come out. player. So, something will come out. We'll we'll find out something. At least I hope we will. Yeah, it's just, it's a brutal, it's a brutal situation for Flames fans. Honestly, like I, I do really feel for Flames fans because this is a guy that you watched grow up, you know, become a star player in the NHL. And now he just leaves you at the altar. It's, it's just brutal. It's brutal for hockey fans in Calgary. And honestly, I, I hope that from here, better days are ahead for the Calgary Flames.